Welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, Bubba, here we are in, in the podcast world, professors at Rick and Bubba University. No topic is, is off the table for Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Today, this one we have been anticipating. Rick, we love to talk to newsmakers and interesting people and someone that almost everybody knows, William Hung. William Hung, welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Hey, everyone. Uh, you know, William, this this is timely because we were fans of yours long ago when you made that historic appearance on uh, American Idol. But just recently, you know, we, we learned about this new real business that's yeah. going on called Cameos. <laughs> where, people, where, where people can pay to have celebrities uh, uh, to do greetings for them. And Bubba, as you know, yesterday played in a celebrity pro-am, a golf tournament. And, you know, we're getting a little older, and, and Bubba was wondering if he could do it. A lot older. And, and, and we had a listener that got you to do a cameo for Bubba, and I want to tell you something, it motivated him. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad uh, that that gave gave you that uh, extra inspiration. <laughs> so, William, I've got to ask you about Cameo while we're on the topic. Uh, yeah. you, you're on there. Do you do a lot of Cameo videos? Yes, I do. Um, I've done over 6,000 Cameos as of last year when I just uh, started. Uh, it's been a huge blessing, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, we're looking, and this is where you wow. were—the same room when you did Bubba. So that's where you do all your cameo stuff. Is this, uh, is this your room? Is is this? Yes, your... it is. Okay. Well, I I tell you what, I like I like the decorations. Are you're not a Miami Dolphin fan, are you? Uh, uh, no, but I do enjoy watching them play. Yeah, because I saw some dolphins and some of the dolphin colors back there. Uh, yep. So so six thousand different cameos. Wow! Uh, how did you learn about that? Were you approached, or did you just find out about it and say, "Hey, I'd like to get in"? Was it a was it a difficult process? Uh, no, it's not. Um, I um, remember uh, someone from Instagram told me to apply as a talent. Uh, you know, it made me. Uh, I have some potential. Uh, it was a very straightforward process. And then when I first started, I didn't get that many requests. I mean, I got some here and there. But it really took off after a few months. It just happened naturally. So, William, I've got to know because we we didn't buy it. A listener bought it and and had you uh, had you wish me good luck and motivation on that. What, what how much are you getting for these? I'm just trying to see what kind of what kind of income you can make here on Cameo. This is interesting. <laughs> I, I I don't mind sharing this. Uh, so I I started uh, around like twenty dollars, uh, and then I I increased it to thirty uh, as I got like uh, too much. Too much uh, demand. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you adjust demand. to the market. Supply we, and demand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that's how I approach it. But the, my overall approach is that uh, I want to make myself accessible to more people. Because uh, it, uh, if you look at the Cameo uh, app, there are many like big time stars that would charge like $200, $800 uh, for a Cameo. And that's okay. You know, it, it, it depends on what your purpose is. For me, I want to inspire thousands of people around the world. Uh, so I feel really good about what I'm doing and still, uh, you know, get closer to my mission. Well, well, William, I mean, that's that's some pretty good change there you're making. I'm even at thirty dollars a pop. Well, that's, I was, uh, that's one hundred and eighty k right yeah, there. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> pretty good. We actually, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I tell well, you, I'm I, I, I'm, on, that. I'm laugh right there with you, <laughs> and I find myself uh, now <laughs> wanting to hold you after and say, "Who do I need to email?" I don't think I can bring in what you're bringing in, but I bet I could do okay. Uh, Rick and Bubba cameos, let's go. So, listen, here it is. You may not. Have, I don't know if you saw the final product. Here is the cameo that you did for Bubba that ex inspired him to take on the Celebrity Pro-Am Golf Tournament. Here, here it is. It's, I don't know if you remember it or not. Hello, Bubba. This is William Hung. I heard you have a golf tournament coming up, and you just need some hard work and perseverance. So don't give up and try your best. Don't let your co-workers talk you out of it. Here is a song for you. And just do it! Be what you want to be, do what you want to do, be true yourself and just do it. Be what you want to be, do what you want to do, because it's all up to you. Look at you. I mean, so what? did you have that song in the hop or you knew, uh, that, or, did, or did the person that sent the cameo request, did they 
tell you to do that song or was that your own ad lib? No, uh, no uh, it's my uh, original song that my record company wrote for me uh, oh, yeah. many years ago. Uh, and uh, it's one of my favorite songs. Uh, I found it very useful uh, and, and, uh, and people love that song uh, on Cameo because a lot of times people ask when they want the pep talk or motivation, that's when I throw in that song. Yeah. William, I've got to ask you because several people have pointed out you can see your ceiling fan in that video, and it looks like there's only three blades on it. <laughs> yeah. Is that by design, or did one get broke off? How's that work? Uh, no, it's by design. Okay, so it's supposed to only have three blades. Yes. You know, our audience sees you know some of the now, strangest I mean, things. So you like took one off on purpose, or because it doesn't look like it's balanced. Correct. Um, I I don't know because um I, I my roommate is the one that's owning the house, uh, okay. but it works just fine when it's hot. Uh, it's gonna get hot very soon here in the <laughs> summer. Yeah, so, so it'll spin with three. Huh? Yeah. So where where do you live now currently? What part of the world? Uh, Jacksonville. Okay. So do you get back to Hong Kong at all? Um, I would love to, but maybe a little bit later. No, you're talking about Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, right? Jacksonville, Florida. Not Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, because yeah, I'm from Jacksonville, Alabama. And I, I, oh, I, there is a Jacksonville, Alabama. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, right up the road. Yeah, you there. didn't know that. Yeah, that's where Bubba is actually from. Yep. Oh, and, nice. And I'm that's where my parents live, too, in Jacksonville, Alabama. So, uh, And I'm going on vacation next week with my wife to Amelia Island, which is just north of you there in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh. So so there's a lot of Jacksonville, Florida tie-in tie in right now. Uh, we well, can yeah. probably tell you where some of the good places to eat are, Rick. Yeah. I, I, you know, probably what? knows the local layout. I bet you do. Uh, so, William, what else are you doing now? Catch everybody up to date. Uh, we, we know about the cameo. What other kind of things are you doing now? Um, I still do some motivational speaking for virtual events, for nonprofits. Uh, and then I am actually a professional poker player. Okay, we heard that. You know, they, <laughs> we heard that. We were talking about this, and and I didn't. I was like, that's. I don't know if that's right or not. But we looked at your bio, and it talks about this that you. So we thought you just consulted, but I guess you consult because you also are a pro, right? Yeah. So so it's it's not so much like one on one um, coaching yet. I I might go there, but it's more like I'm just sharing my love and experience for the game to help people. How did you get into poker? When, when, when did that happen? Um, I started back in 2004 um, as a hobby, uh, right after my American Idol audition. I wanted to do something different uh, besides entertainment, uh, and I enjoyed the game that from the very first time I played it. And and then you you people, I, I, have you done well? I mean, we see yeah. you've done well on Cameo. Or how are you doing on professional poker? Uh, I've done really well. Uh, I've done well enough to uh, quit my government job uh, since January 2020. Uh, and and then it, I, it, this gave me a new life. You know, now I can explore different paths like Cameo. And who who knows what other possibilities will be there soon. Now, I, I know you said you quit your government job. Now, am I understanding this, that you were helping the, the police solve crimes? You were a crime analyst. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually pretty close. I was working for the sheriff's department in Los Angeles, um, and uh, I was a statistical analyst. But the job is not as exciting as it sounds, because when I first signed up for it, I thought I'd be doing the work like CSI on TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but instead, uh, you know, you know, the numbers that you see um, every year, like how many uh, homicides, right. how many burglaries, right. things like that. Uh, I'm one of those people that's produced those numbers. All right, so William Hung is our guest, and, and, and we, we, I tell you, this we is, have only we've only scratched the surface. Yeah, there's just so much here. All right, we'll be back more with William Hung when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues. So William Hung, this was the moment that changed your life forever. Uh, you went on American Idol in 2004. You sang that song that we just played, uh, Ricky Martin's "She Bangs," uh, and and hey, could you believe what happened? I mean, uh, how, how when when did first of all, how do you end up on American Idol? How did you end up, you know, singing? Take us back to take us to two thousand four. How did this happen? Won the talent show at UC Berkeley, singing that same song "She Bangs" by Ricky Martin. Uh, I enjoy karaoke since I was 10 years old, uh, and I just thought I had nothing to lose, so I wanted to try something new. 
So winning that talent show in school gave me the confidence to audition for American Idol. Okay, so you you get passed through. What was the process? Because thousands of people. I mean, thousands, especially in L.A., <laughs> they're lined up for miles. Yeah, what was the process <laughs> that got you in front of the judges? Yeah, so I lined up at the baseball park uh, outside of San Francisco. Uh, that's what that's when it happened. That was a long uh, line. At, it is. I was very lucky. I only waited for a couple hours. Uh, and then most people only got 15 seconds to sing before they were told to go home. All right. uh, somehow, uh, the staff members, they let me sing over a minute, and they let me through. They told me to come back the next day. Were you were you surprised by that, or did the the winning the talent show at Berkeley give you some confidence? Did were were you surprised that you weren't told to go home? Um, I wasn't sure. Uh, I was surprised, but I I wasn't sure because may, maybe I have some legitimate talent. I didn't know, uh, so I I I just took advantage of the opportunity and show up again the next day. The next day, I auditioned in front of the producers. They let me through again. And by the time I got to see Randy, Paula, and Simon, there were less than a hundred people left. So tell us, because I know wow. they, I know they edit these things for a TV show. Yeah. So the auditions are edited. Is there anything that some interaction you had with the judges that we never saw? How did how how did they treat you? Uh, well, it's what I expected. Uh, if if uh, if you uh, want to see the whole interaction. You can just watch the extended audition on YouTube. Okay. Uh, so, you know, Randy is uh, kind of a cool guy, a funny guy. Uh, Paula is the nice lady. And Simon, as we all know, is going to be the mean guy. <laughs> yes, he is. So was he, I can't remember, yeah. was he especially rough to you? I, I can't remember that part of it. Um, well, he, he was crossing his arms like this. He, he, he was frowning. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that I w my, my audition wouldn't make it to Hollywood. Uh, and I, I knew that something negative would come out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so let, let's unpack that a minute because you, you are you, a unique singer and you've made it clear you sing because you enjoy it yeah. and, and you want people to see the, the sheer joy, which we all do see yeah. uh, when, you, when you sing. But you step out into the world, and the reason why I say this, now the world, I think, has gotten even meaner now than it was then because we've, we've social just – Social media. You know, like yeah, that. social media. Think, you know, now it's just gotten where people can hide and, and be vicious and mean, and, and I don't know why people take joy in that. But, but anyway, still, though, when you go out to the public, Bubba and I do this show all the time, uh, and, and we have been in front of a lot of people, and people can have different opinions on whether, whether they think that you're – talented or whether you should be singing uh what were, were you, how did you handle the negativity of people who who missed what you were doing and and thought to, and started giving you a difficult time was that was that hard on you yeah initially i wasn't used to it uh because i just thought i had the right to try something new like everybody else in life um many i would say that uh, it, it's, not, it's not just singing. It's not just auditioning. It's everything else in life. It, uh, like, like let's, whether you start a new business or a new venture or maybe move to a new place or try out a new career, I feel like it's the same thing. Why should I uh, be judged differently just because I went into the audition and I didn't make it to Hollywood? Yeah, do, do you think that you sing well? Here's why. Here's how I put it. Uh, oh, okay. I I know I don't have the best talent for singing. <laughs> right. I, I, uh, right. I but I feel like uh, since the staff and the producers already let me through multiple rounds, I should just give my best and yeah. and have no regrets later on in life. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You that have kind of spills into the whole message. I, I was about to say you've yeah. come to the right place. Yeah. yeah because yeah. Uh, just about everybody in the radio industry. Mm. Uh, they don't think that Bubba and I are very good at what we do, but we do it because we love it, and we do it in a way that we want to do it, and there is an audience for the people who like what we do. Thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. For so, 27 years. Yeah, and I think <laughs> you have lived out an example uh, to all of us, and you talk about this in your book, Champion by Choice. Uh, yeah. You know, when, when this is a choice that you've made, that uh, you, you really have done a really incredible job, which means you must have a lot of self-confidence, to not let the critics and the people who maybe 
want to uh, to be mean about it get to you. It, it's obvious they haven't. Yeah, I, I, it, it, you cannot please everybody. Uh, you, you, I would say what keeps me going to this day, uh, 17 years ago, are my fans as well, my audience. Yeah, because you, you did establish an audience of people that say, you know what? Uh, that we like William Hung, and there have been many, many people that the critics may may deem to have a lot of talent that have not had the fan base that you established. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and I'm very grateful. Uh, you know, may, I, 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 when I look back at this whole experience, maybe I was just at the right place at the right time. One thing I did notice is that many people that don't make it to Hollywood, they get really negative and upset. Uh, they would uh, get cussed at the judges. Right. Some people even throw water bottles at Simon Cowell. <laughs> and I just didn't feel the need to do that. All right, we're going to come back and continue our conversation with William Hung when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. All right, so uh, we talk about this on the big show a lot, and that's Gabby. And, and, and these, these letters mean get a better insurance. Uh, and what, what does that mean? Well, most of us, when it comes to our home insurance, our automobile insurance, we just go with maybe some company our family's always used, or we just try to get it off the table. We want our mortgage to be approved. Yeah. We want to get this automobile off the lot. Well, that's all right, but but there's Gabby has provided something that's at, at no cost to you. There's no obligation of any kind that you can go to Gabby.com, and, and I want you to use our, our URL when you go there. It's Gabby, G-A-B-I dot com slash Rick Bubba, slash Rick Bubba. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash Rick Bubba. Here's what happens, and it's free. They'll pull up 40 other insurance companies when you give them a little bit of information about your insurance. And, again, you don't have to pay them anything. There's no obligation. And they give you a true comparison, meaning you're looking at other insurance companies. All the big names are there, Progressive, Nationwide, Travelers, all in one place. You compare what you're paying for the exact same coverage and look and see if someone has a better deal. And and in some cases, it's a much better deal. We've had uh, listeners of this podcast saving $961 per year on average. Uh, so, uh, And they're not going to sell you information. So, just go to Gabby.com slash Rick Bubba, compare the insurance. If you've got the best deal, great. But if somebody's got a better deal for the same coverage, save yourself some money. So we're back with William Hung on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. William, looking at the things that happened, uh, because I, the great thing about the United States of America, and I, I'm, I'm starting to worry that people have forgotten this, there's not another country that is out there that William Hung can be the success story that you are. You got in front of people. You 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 came up with a fan base. There's people that follow what you do. Uh, you've gone into motivational speaking. You've authored the book Champion by Choice. You you've become an investor. My goodness, you're a professional poker player. You're you're, you're owning it on Cameo. So uh, so let let's let's jump into the motivational speaking. So what are the kind of companies or groups that hire you and what message do you bring? My mission in my life uh, since the beginning is to help people try something new without being judged or ridiculed. That has not changed. Um, it, regardless whether I speak for a small group uh, at a local uh, event or a big national or even international sales conference, uh, the, some of the biggest companies I've spoken for um, are Microsoft, Remax, and Kovo. So you, you've, you've been to the biggest of the big. Yes. William, I, I've got to know if there's a company out there and they're wanting to book you, what's it going to cost to get William out there to, to motivate Yeah, Yeah, like, like it, who, who books you for speaking? Do you do it yourself? Are you with an agency? And, and, and what normally are we talking about? Um, it just depends because uh, uh, the pandemic has changed so, uh, everything. Uh, so now I'm more willing to do virtual events. Right. Uh, I would say it uh, every event will be different. It depends on the, the scale of the conference, uh, the impact that, that I want to make. I focus more on the impact. You know, is it like 200 people, uh, employees uh, right. in human resources? Who is it for? Right. So, uh, or is it for uh, or, uh, a community, you know, uh, for thousands of people at an outdoor setting? You know, uh, it's every, every event is different. So for somebody to book you, though, who would they contact? How, how would somebody get in touch with you? Uh, they could just go directly to me. Uh, I, I handle the booking myself. 
Yeah, well, look look at all he's got going. He I don't, he don't I wanna, mean, you talking about efficient. Why would Cut I, out the middle, man. Why would, I mean. I, why would I send some kind of commission <laughs> to this person when he can do it himself? I love it. Bubba, I'm looking over his record sales. Okay, I, I've got them so right what, here. So what are, what are records? All right, so we're, we're talking about when he did the album Inspiration. Right. Okay. He has sold, and I'm sure it's more now because these, these are numbers uh, back before you got into all this. Uh, uh, you know, this was straight up on how many units you sell. All over the world, 200,000 copies. Okay. And and then A Happy Summer from William Hung. I must have missed this one. Now, I know Hung for the Holidays because yeah, we, we have got it. A copy we of got that, that one. <laughs> but I didn't know about uh, Miracle Happy Summer from William Hung. I don't remember this one. Um, uh, th- so this w- this one did not do as well as the others. What was that one about, William? Um, it was uh, a, a new um, album of different cover songs that uh, uh, to give a different style. Uh, just try something different and see what happens. And uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't do as well, but that's okay uh, because uh, you know it, I understand the entertainment uh, career. Um, for most people, it's not going to last a lifetime, including for me. That's why I had to keep evolving myself. Uh, and and I'm very grateful for what I have. I know I got way more than I expected. Well, so I see too when you were at Berkeley and you you started this uh, and, and tried out for American Idol. It says that you were a civil engineer. So you you must be good with the numbers. Uh, you, you must be really good with the numbers and building. What what kind of civil engineering did you want to do initially? Um, I don't think civil engineering was the right fit. I didn't know uh, what else I could have picked uh, when I was like this young kid, right. you know, 17, 18 year old. Now, I just thought, yeah, I agree with you. I definitely like numbers. I'm good at math and statistics. Uh, but if I were to pick uh, a different major, which I eventually did, uh, I actually finished my bachelor's in math after American Idol and I got my master's in business. So I, does that does that help you being a poker player? I mean, I, I don't want to use the term yeah. counting cards, but I mean, you, you're you able to, to keep up with what's going on and maybe know the percentage of the way the odds might fall, right? Yeah, yeah, the numbers really help. Uh, and I would say uh, it really, it's not about counting cards, but it's more, it's more like uh, I spend a lot of time doing research um, when I'm not playing uh, about like how most people play in most situations. So William, when when I'm back over here in in the the music again, hung yeah, for, no problem. Hung yeah. for the holidays, you know, thirty five, forty thousand copies. All right, we have hung for the holidays. So in the music genre, what you're best known for, even though you know now I think that may be changing a little bit because it's more of a motivational uh, product, uh, and and uh, your message is a great one uh, to people who sometimes feel uh, like maybe they don't have the confidence in themselves that they should because they're concerned about backlash or how other people see you versus how you see yourself. Uh, but I yes. want, but I want to, but I want to ask this. So Bubba and I know to some degree what, what it takes to do other people's songs and you can do parodies and all this. I know that the, that people have to give you permission, right? To, if you're going to sell it, did you have to get permission from these artists to, to do your version of their songs? Uh, yeah. So so when the, I put out the album Inspiration, the record company uh, got permission from people at Ricky Martin. So did anybody, did, was there an artist you wanted to cover that denied you? Not really. Um, no, no issues there. So William, is, is mm-hmm. when all this success hit following American Idol, I know you, you did a lot of media. You did TV shows, Jimmy Kimmel Live, you did Ryan Seacrest, you did George Lopez, you did Letterman. I mean, you did did a Howard Stern show, you did (laughs) Ellen show. Don't mind. I mean, uh, what was that like? Did you, was there one particular you enjoyed and maybe one that wasn't as much fun? (laughs) <laughs> well um i really like alan uh she she she's such a, such an amazing person very kind person uh and then uh the, my least favorite uh would be howard stern yeah. uh, because, uh, I, I feel it's just not a good fit because i i don't feel um comfortable talking about you know 
sex or provocative <laughs> topics yeah. you know? as, right. as a young kid. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the show to be on if you're uncomfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I bet he didn't want to know near as much about the studio recording. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, but but you but you other than there and you know he's going for a shock factor and all that. Yeah. I, I, I actually commend you for not that not being desirable to you. <laughs> Uh, the topics he wanted to talk about, but but overall, you, you, when you went out on the media tour, uh, did you feel like you were treated well, and that you you they cast you in the light that you intended? Well, um, you know, it's a it's it's a mixed uh, re, uh, feeling uh, because uh, some media they they uh, they still say like you know I shouldn't be in the showbiz, uh, I'm a I'm the I'm a bad singer, da 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 da. And then you know other media they they were they were very kind and respectful to me so so it's, it's a mixed bag but overall I would say I'm uh, uh, I, I'm very grateful uh, for the support that I received over the years. You know when when someone is being negative to you like that, did you ever just want to ask them how many copies of an album they've sold, or uh, <laughs> maybe show them your numbers, or or how many cameos you're doing? <laughs> uh, I, I I don't I don't approach it that way um, because I feel in life it's very important to uh, stay humble, have the sense of humility regardless of where you're at. Um, and, and, uh, so I'm I always just want to treat people the way I want to be treated. Now I know American Idol, maybe more than once, but I know once they they brought you back for one of their shows where they were highlighting people who had been on before. What was that yes. like to go back and and see those people again and be a part of that? I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy meeting uh, wonderful people like Kelly Clarkson and Carrie Underwood in person. So yeah, I I I I, lo- I loved it. I'm 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 very uh, grateful. So do you do you ever hear from Simon Cowell anymore? Do you have any kind of relationship with him? Um, not really, but I do uh, see uh, Simon, Randy, and Paula uh, typically together when I see them. Uh, so I went to like uh, events like Teen Choice Awards uh, before the pandemic, uh, and uh, yeah, I do see them together. So have you? Did you do any of the other contests like other than American Idol? Did you? Did you ever try out for the the other ones that are out there? Yeah, even no, the international no, version. I, I, I don't see a point of doing that. Yeah, well, one, well look, let me tell you, you you're not going <laughs> to fly under the radar, not after the impression you made. So yeah, so you do the cameos, you do the poker, uh, you do the public speaking. Do you do any live concerts? I mean, did you when you did this album? Did you do any kind of tour, or was it just studio only? Um, I did a lot of tour, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, official tour. I don't have like like list of stops. Uh, you know, at a certain yeah. date and time. I didn't have that. Right. What happened was that I got many many invites uh, to do live shows. So I just take it as it comes. You know, from from East Coast, West Coast to Iceland to Malta to chi- <laughs> China. Yeah, it was just crazy. So <laughs> your message about being positive. Yeah. And and that's that's certainly lost with a lot of people today. Boy, I think. It, I'm telling you. Uh, is this something that was ingrained in you by your parents, or is this something that just kind of came upon you more or less, or, or, or did you? Who who helped to mold that into you? Yeah, I have to thank my mom. <laughs> you know, with Mother's Day coming up, I I especially my my mom taught me it's okay to fail as long as you try your best, and that really stood out to me as as someone uh, as a Hong Kong kid because I was born in Hong Kong, and typically in Hong Kong, there's a lot of pressure to get good grades. Uh, if you don't get good grades, I wasn't a great student. I was I barely got by. So, you know, you could get beat up, you could, uh, get, you could get like verbally abused. So, yeah. so yeah, you know, I, I'm very grateful. I have a mom that's very understanding. So talk a little bit about growing up in Hong Kong and then coming to the U S how, how did that happen? Um, so I was, uh, born there. I lived there for about 10 years and then my parents, uh, wanted to move to the United States because my dad got a new job here in the United States. Now, what did he do? Uh, he's actually a jewelry model maker. A, a jewelry, well, he, he makes uh, like the, the molds, the molds things? that go with it. Yeah, like the mounts. So, 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 so what happens is that people give him the, the picture of a nice ring or whatever, and mm-hmm. then he will make it. Hmm. Huh. How about that? You know what? I wish I, I wish you knew how to contact you. Is your dad still living? 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, he doesn't do that anymore, okay. but that's what he used to do. Well, yeah. I'm too late. I mean, and then... so do they live in the Jacksonville area? Do you see them a lot? No, they live in Los Angeles. Still in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. So how how when did you leave L.A.? How long have you been in Jacksonville, Florida? About five months. Oh, bra- wow. Oh, so, so this new. is this yeah. is brand new. So yeah. so what what was the reason for the move? The reason why everybody else is leaving California? I mean, it's becoming <laughs> it's becoming a very expensive place to live. That's definitely part of the reason. Um, uh, and and then the, the 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 but the main reason was that I just couldn't run my cameo business there anymore. Uh, pe- my neighbors got very annoyed by me singing too many she bangs for a day. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your neighbors did too, too much cameo going on. That's funny. yeah, and, and plus, I bet I bet California takes a lot of that cameo money too. Boy, they'll take. A yeah, tax. they did. Oh my yeah. goodness! <laughs> it's like uh, I wish I moved moved somewhere else, a little bit more tax friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I mean, you. I guess you talk to your parents. They st- they're still dealing with a lot of lockdowns in California, right? Um, no, things have got a lot better in LA. Oh, yeah. yeah, last year was terrible. I mean, there was a point where you couldn't get any medical help if, uh, uh, because of the pandemic. But this, but now everything seems to be opening back up. All right, we're going to come back, continue our conversation, and wrap up the, the last part of today's edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, ExpressVPN, uh, you know, a, a few decades ago, this was not a big deal, Bubba. I mean, private citizens... Used to be uh, private citizens, yeah. uh, not not anymore. Uh, now everything we do uh, seems to be public because of the internet. Well, we live on the internet, Rick. We, we, everything we do, and you have to have protection. Yeah. So think about everything that you have. Just think about it in your own life. How many things have you browsed? How many things have you searched for? Many of you right now are searching for William Hung. Uh, you, you, things you've watched, things you've tweeted. Now imagine all of that data uh, being crawled through, collected, and then, of course, third parties take it And to them, they treat it like it's a public record. But you know what? That's your private record. Uh, So having your private life exposed for others to see was something at one time only celebrities had to worry about. But in an era where everyone is online, everyone, even without you choosing to be be it, you're a public figure. Uh, So to keep uh, the the data private, uh, when when I go online, if you want to keep it private, you go online, use ExpressVPN. Uh, There are hundreds of of data brokers out there whose sole business is to buy and sell your data. And the worst part is that they don't have to tell you that they're selling it or to get your consent. They just do it. Uh, So here's what you need to do, because one of the the data points is our IP address. Uh, That's what they love to harvest. They'll use that IP to uniquely identify me, you, and our location. So ExpressVPN, then your connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server and our IP address and yours will be masked then. It becomes invisible. It becomes uh, anonymous again. So every time that we turn ExpressVPN on, uh, th- then, then I'm given a random IP address so people there's, they can't find the consistency of it. So uh, the best part, how easy ExpressVPN is to use, no matter what your device is, the phone, laptop, smart TV, all you have to do is just tap one button and you're protected. So go get it now. If you think your data should be private and you think it's your business, then you secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market, expressvpn.com slash Rick Bubba. You get three extra months for free. That's express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash Rick Bubba. That's expressvpn.com slash Rick Bubba to learn more. Rick, we, I mean, Bubba. <laughs> you're Rick. Rick, Bubba. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. That's what I was trying to say. It's been a difficult week. Bubba, our guest, there he is, William Hung. William Hung. William, let me ask you this. Are you uh, are you much of a sports fan, or w- what kind of hobbies do you have away from your cameo business? Uh, my number one hobby is definitely poker. Uh, and then I do watch sports from time to time. Uh, I love uh, watching some college football games, some basketball, and uh, and, and uh uh, NFL. Uh, I I think baseball is a bit too slow for me, so probably just football and basketball. So when you're doing your poker competition, uh, are you in like a professional league, or how, how does that work? How's that organized? Um, not really. Uh, so po- what makes poker different is that you just show up at a at a live casino for a live game, uh, and th- and then you play at the stakes that you feel you you could beat, you could do well in. Um, right, right now, I play in the mid stakes, and that's why uh, I I uh, rebranded myself for uh, mid stakes poker. So, when you say mid stakes, what what kind of money are you talking about in a, in a hand of that? 
It's sure. Um, so so the so the game that I typically play in would be like two five no limit. Uh, so the buy in is like between like two hundred to eight hundred dollars. So you're looking at you know a, um uh, any given hand I could lose eight hundred bucks or win eight hundred bucks. So, but when you sit down to play, does anybody ever go? Wait a minute, you're William Hung. <laughs> Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so you get recognized still everywhere you go. Yeah, I, 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 it's it, it's not everybody recognized me in the beginning, but it only takes one or two people, and then they, they get the word out, and then other people are like, "Oh my god, really?" Yeah. So when you we watch, uh, you know, I've seen the the poker games on TV. Uh, these guys, a lot of them have glasses on and hats, and some of them have colorful nicknames. I mean, what what yep. is your get up? Do you do all that? Not really. I, I think I think people to uh, put too much emphasis on that. Uh, so I just focus on uh, playing a, a sound uh, fundamental strategy. So what what type of poker do you play in this? I mean, I, I'm not really a poker player, so I no I don't, worries. Yeah, I don't know the question to ask. Yeah, we're, we're, we don't we, we don't play poker because uh, uh, it just never was part of our our lives. So and and plus, I don't have money that I can afford to lose. Yeah, but, but we do drive. <laughs> We do drive on the interstate every day, which is our own version of it. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> the word poker that means that's just a heading over multiple types of games, types of right? games, right? Uh, it's it's a card game, uh, and and yeah, I would say it's definitely a, a skilled game uh, because even though in short turn anybody can win or lose on any given day, you know, long term, yeah, the people that 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 play better, it's gonna come out ahead. So yeah, uh, that that's that's what that's what it is. But is it like a five card stud or? Oh or? no no no! Texas, it's called uh, Texas Hold'em. Texas, so it's all like, of it's it Texas Hold'em. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, explain just to, briefly how you play that. You go to I'm, Texas to play. No, that. you don't do that. Though. <laughs> so how for for people like me that don't play, how how do how do you play that game? Okay, so you you dealt two cards uh, for every given hand, and then you get you have you have three choices. You either raise, call, or fold. So so yeah, that that's how you play. And, and and then uh, you you try to play uh, like the old that I'll, I'll give you a very simple version yeah. that like like if if you're a beginner and you take the strategies at casino you can probably do okay so I I usually only play like middle pairs like pair of sevens or above and then all the big cards like jack ten queen ten queen jack king queen all that stuff so if you don't get that what you just described do you just fold and go the next hand. Usually, yes. So you're not going. You're not staying in the game if it's below a pair of sevens. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not that simple because the the Texas Hold'em is a position game. Mm-hmm. So 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 like 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 as you get as you uh, as the you get better at the game, you should be playing more hands in position, and then you play less hands out of position. I got to tell you, I got no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, mean but, you know, but that's all right. Clearly, I mean, yeah. clearly, this is not a game for us, Rick. We were not that good at no, math. No, we were not. You're, uh, you're much better at math. Now, do you still <laughs> – I'm really better at Uno. I'm better at Uno or Rook. Right. I, think, yeah. I guess uh, we could be politicians one day because we're no good at math. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. You can you can use that one, William Hung. Uh, so, all right, so do people – we just got about five more minutes, but do people ask you still, like, randomly, like on the streets or whatever, to sing something to them? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Uh, but I usually, uh, th- I don't do it in public. Uh, I no, usually, no way. I, yeah, no. I I do it more like like a like a curated setting. I think that's, that's the right word to put it. So it could be cameo, it could be virtual event, but not oh, not see. like on the street. Yeah, you got to send yeah, the cameo where the, the check's cleared, Rick. Well, that's well, better. Uh, so do do you have? I mean, the <laughs> he's really good at numbers, Rick. Okay. Yeah, he is. He is. Kid yeah. But I got to tell you something. I, I got to tell you something. I'm about to ask you to sing, just so you know. <laughs> I mean, I can't have you on this podcast and you not sing something. So <laughs> so, sure, sure. so so <laughs> so if you were gonna sing any song, and I know you've already done the just do it. We've done that one. So you did that in the cameo. I know everybody wants you to sing the Ricky Martin, but that you don't have to do that. Sing something that's fresh to you that you you're not tired of singing. That's fine with me. Do you have something that you would like to go to? Sure. Here okay. it is. All right. And can you feel the love tonight? It is where we are. It's enough. To make kings and regular bars believe the very best. How about oh, that? That's where you're right there. 
You know, we call that vintage hung. That's right. That's that is, right. The, on the on the album hung for the holidays. What what Christmas classic was your favorite? Um, I would say Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I didn't yeah, see that. You know what? I, I would agree. That that, that and, agree. Now, on on those, I know I love talking business with William Hunt. Yeah, I do too. On those, those had all become public domain, right? You didn't have to get anybody's permission on the on the traditional Christmas songs, did no, you? No, no. Yeah. You see his face. I, know. I, I ain't gonna rip me back no. on that one. Let me tell you what. I want to underline again. William Hung is good at numbers. Yeah, he is. And don't kid yourself. And and all your songs now out in the the digital world. I know that that there's not as much money uh, now for selling music, but but you got to be in all of it. I mean, you just got to sell much more of it. But this cameo thing you've hit on, I th- I think you got something going here. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I'm very grateful for this to happen to me. I, I didn't expect it. It's more just, you know, a, another venture that I tried uh, last year because because I felt like, you know, I had nothing to lose, right? I, I have everything to gain, right? I put myself on the profile. The worst thing, you know, in life, well, when you want to try something new, the question that I ask myself is, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? The worst thing that could happen to me is, you know, not that much traffic, not, not, not didn't make that much money. And then I try something else. And that's okay. Right. Uh, but the best thing that could happen to me is like, it could change your life. Right. So, 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 it, so whatever it is that you want to try in life, it, uh, if, if no, if losing the consequence of losing is not that bad, just go for it. You know, I gotta, it's, it's really. I wish you could just ride around with me. I, I know it. I yeah, know it. It's yeah. very motivating. And look at it, man. Go, Rick. This ain't no big deal. Don't I, let this bother you, uh, William. You you are the American dream. And there's a lot of people that are just afraid to always try something. They get hung in a you know the same old same old. No and pun intended. Yeah, and they won't step out. But uh, I tell you, you you have you have done an amazing job. I, hats off to you. Thank you so much. So so William Hung, if you want him to do cameos, he's out there on cameo. Uh, I, I think that also, have you ever, have you had anybody that, uh, when, when you, you do the singing and I know you do all that, do you, what about commercials? Have people talked to you about uh, being part of their advertising well, you campaign? you did some Super Bowl commercials, Yeah, did you do Super Bowl commercial? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've done some uh, in, uh, in the past before, uh, like, like uh, AT&T, uh, Jack in the Box. And then now, uh, interestingly, from Cameo, uh, I got some recent uh, business marketing requests, which is really cool. Let me tell you, in the Cameo world, <laughs> Mr. William Hung, <laughs> your star true. has only begun to rise. <laughs> I know it. Because people, they just got to find out about it. And this will help. I think more people will find out about it, start doing this kind of stuff. Because I think the reason why you saw it ramp up is in the beginning, nobody knew you were out there. And, and now, yeah. the, now they're. Not even could believe it. Yeah, now you know? they're finding out that you are actually out there. So I think yeah. I think your cameo uh, star has just begun to rise. William Hong, Thank keep you. going for it. Keep going for it. Thank you for taking time to be with us today. It, it has been a, a pleasure, um, and uh, and we'll we'll encourage more people to reach out to you as our listeners did for you to do the cameo yep. for Bubba. And let me tell you something: he got through that golf tournament yesterday, and what some people are calling almost like he had a miraculous <laughs> hidden power that nobody knew about. <laughs> And I tell you what he had. It's called two words, William Hung. <laughs> William Hung, thank you so much for being with us, Thank buddy. you, brother. Yeah, thank You're welcome. You're a breath of fresh air. And thanks uh, to all of you that joined us on this special edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Nice work, William, and I appreciate you taking time to be with us. That was fun, man. I love it. Yeah. And look, we'll, we may be dialing you in on Cameo again for That's you. That's right. Know. Yeah. You'll probably get a lot more Cameo requests from, <laughs> from our audience. And, and, sure. uh, and, uh, and we'll talk to you maybe about being on the uh, the regular show, too, at some point. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Have a great day. Uh, bye-bye. Bye.